Hey folks, Pops here from Bourbon and Banter. Today we're reviewing Still 630's experimental release number two. That's right. This is the second release of what's going to be a five-year journey of monthly releases, and Bourbon and Banter is thrilled to be along for the ride. But before we get into the details, I've got a quick pop quiz. Uh, it's pretty easy. Hopefully you can know the answer. So who can tell me what this has to do with this, the X2? Think you know the answer? Well, tell you what, climb aboard. Let's find out. All right, so I asked you what this had to do with this. So we'll get to that in a minute. But let me tell you about this. This is X2, second release from Still 630 Distilleries Experimental Release Collection. They're gonna be releasing a new whiskey every month for the next five years. So if you do the quick math, use your fingers and your toes, that's 60 different spirits that are gonna be released in five years. If you want more information and background on what this is all about, watch our first video, which was for Experimental Release 1 or X1, as it was known, and that'll give you information not only about this uh, Still 630, but also about the whole uh, Experimental Release uh, endeavor. So, that being said, what you need to know about this, the particulars is as follows. This is, just like X1, it is a American single malt whiskey made from two row malted barley and aged in 15 gallon barrels. So, you're gonna have some of that oaky notes and flavor to this um, simply because of that, um, but more about that in a minute. What else you need to know is it was aged for roughly 14 and a half months in that 15 gallon barrel, and then, it was dumped into a used barrel um, from Still 630's Expedition Rum. That's where this comes in, right? Get it? Pirates Rum, right? Clever? Okay. Anyway, enough of that. Um, but what's cool is a great starter whiskey that they put out, um, then further finished in a rum cask. So pretty cool collaboration. Great idea how to reuse, repurpose, and to draw on all the distillery prowess that still 630 has. But at the end of the day, it's really gonna come down to what it tastes like, right? So let's go ahead and dive into that now. Now, what I can tell you is this one, um, as I said a few minutes ago, when you nose it, at first you're gonna have a lot of that toasted oak that you get from a small barrel. And once again, that's kind of the, the price for entry. But what I've said before about still 630's products is that oak, instead of being a detriment, really kind of adds to it, sort of like a signature, if you will. So I, I'm kind of really used to it now, but if it's the first time trying it, you're gonna have to realize that you're gonna have that. But if you let it open up, you give it a few minutes, um, it's gonna start to fade, and it's gonna become really an integrated component of the experience of the whiskey. Like the X1, you're gonna get a lot of cereal, kind of like that biscuit malty uh, um, notes that you would expect from a single malt. Um, and once again, you're also gonna get some of that sweet toffee and a hint of cocoa. But where this one differences, or differentiates itself, is that there is now a syrupy sweetness, if you will, from that rum barrel. Ah, it really, I mean, it smells great. I mean, you just wanna, you know, it's not overly sweet, um, but it does smell like the type of thing that you wouldn't mind pouring on top of your pancakes or mixing in with a little bit of vanilla ice cream. It's really, really nice. And to be frank, it's one of my kind of things when I really, really like the smell of a whiskey, I can get lost in smelling it, um, which makes me wish sometimes I could pour it in and get a candle made out of it. Um, that would be kind of interesting. I think this would be uh, an awesome way to, to kind of remember that the uh, smell. Great mouthfeel, very velvety, not too thin, not too thick, so I like that. You know, once again, you get some of that oak up front, but it's really, really balanced in that it's not overpowering. And what I get on, on, on the tip of my tongue is that maple syrup sweetness once again. And it's mingled in there with some fruit, some spices. Not really dark fruits, but more like golden fruits, like golden raisins and with that spice. Once again, a little remnant of a, of a, of a um, spice cake, if you will, a fruit cake, but a little sweeter. 
um, that, that finishing in that rum barrel really is pronounced and really adds a note that I, I'm, I'm enjoying. As far as the finish goes, there's a little bit of astringency, which comes from that 15 gallon barrel, once again, to be expected. But once again, it it's really mingles well, so it's not overpowering. Um, in fact, um, it adds to what I think is a really nice finish of mingles that oak and that spice. And once again, that maple syrup continues to play out there. And the finish is about, we'll call it medium in length, if you will, and leaves you with a nice, sweet, spicy um, element on your tongue. Very pleasant. The, um, the burn itself is mild. There's a little bit of surge right about in here, but not too pronounced. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, a little bit more up here. So it took a little while to come through, but very nice once again. You know, I really liked the X1, um, despite its young age, and I thought it showed a lot of promise. I've had it in another variation of theirs where it's finished in cherry wood. It's fantastic. Um, I think this is a great finish, finishing technique for this single malt of theirs, and I really like it. You know, their Expedition Rum is not overly sweet to start with, so I think that's a, a good thing in case it, it you know, kind of rounded the edges on this one and added an extra dimension to it, but didn't make it sickeningly sweet, as often some finishes can do. Um, if you're not a fan of, of those types of finishes, you might still want to give this a shot. I think it's subdued enough to be enjoyable for those who don't like that. And once again, sweet enough for the people who do. Um, so it's a very good balance. So, you know, what I can tell you is still 630's done another great job. This is release number two, so another good notch forward. We've got a lot of whiskeys ahead of us, 58 to be, um, to be accurate about it. Um, and I'm gonna continue to look forward to what Dave and his team bring out. That being said, if you're interested in learning more, once again, watch our first video. Um, please uh, subscribe to our channel, subscribe to this playlist and um, let us know if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer them for them. And if you're in St. Louis or can get down this way, it's the first Friday of every month, they're gonna release another one. So X3 will be coming out soon. And we do our best to be down there in person whenever we can. But if you let us know you're coming for sure, uh, we'll do our best to meet you down there and uh, pour you a drink and get your feedback and maybe even put you on camera. So that's it. Thanks for coming. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you get a minute, we'd encourage you to um, visit our website, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you're looking uh, to get geared up in some of your favorite whiskey and bourbon uh, swag items, please head over to our online store. Uh, every purchase helps support this channel um, and what we're doing at Bourbon and Banter, and we appreciate your support. Until then, cheers, and remember guys, drink curious. Mm -hmm.